Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Elisa Sklar. I am the VP of Marketing here at GIS Planning, and we appreciate you taking time out of your busy days. I am very glad to be here with my colleague, Stevie Field Chavez. Hello, Stevie. Hi, Elisa. Now, at GIS Planning, we've been around for 20 years. We are the original creators of Zoom Prospector Enterprise, which was the very, very first online GIS data tool for corporate site selection. Um, and we like to think that we are consistent innovators. We have been changing up our products and adding new features and functionality and offering new interfaces over the 20 years that we have been doing this. So we really are consistent innovators, which is really the reason we feel that we are the industry leaders. More than 65% uh, of Americans live in territories serviced by our technology and 100% of Canadians, we are now owned by the Financial Times and we have expanded internationally as well. So you are all part of a large family of clients that include uh, regions in Switzerland and Sweden and France and the UK and Spain and that list is growing every day. And the tool we're gonna show you here today is a complete rethinking and redesign of Zoom Prospector, GIS, Zoom Pro GIS Planning Zoom Prospector tool, which is really our flagship product and the one we are best known for. And what we have done with this tool is gone back to basics, listened to what all of our clients and the site selectors and the business end users and the website users were telling us. And we went back and took the features that everyone really loves and then expanded them and made them even more powerful and added some new things in there as well. So one of the things that you'll notice is that we have moved to a side-by-side -side split screen map. Um, so you have the map, Google Maps on one side and property display on the, on the left. And um, the idea here is really to follow best practices. You see this on Airbnb, you see it on Zillow, that side-by-side -side map and result is really critical, uh, makes it easier to read and easier to research. You'll see that it is now possible, we've really made sure that analytical power within the tool is something that all of your website end users can do because they come to these websites with questions. We wanna make sure that they can find those answers right on your website. So all of our data is interactive, analytical, that you can drill down into them. So you can dynamically sort data within reports. You can dynamically change the radius tool and results in the report will adjust on the fly. There's a pinpoint tool. You can just drop it into the map and do analysis around that. You'll see that we have a new free draw tool. So you just to apply that filter, draw around a particular area and boom, you can do the analysis and report just around the area that your user has assigned. You'll see that we've got new heat map functionality. You can now save properties into multiple project files. This is really powerful for you internally to keep track of different projects, but site selectors and other end users are gonna love that as well. You can search sites and buildings together or separately. That's entirely up to your end user. There's new design and reports, improved PDF reports, and so much more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this over to Stevie and she is going to take you on a tour of this so you can walk through and see all of these functions and features on a live client website. Very good, very good. Okay, so um, a couple of things that we're gonna do is we're gonna just highlight some of the things that Elisa had chatted about, um, some of the new features and functionalities about the tool um, and just highlight how they can be used, how they can be customized, and um, some of the new things that we're working on. Uh, so for this, for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to use the Team Volusia site um, in Florida, as well as the State of Connecticut site, because we're going to toggle back and forth a little bit. Um, we also have a, kind of a couple of fun new features to show you um, that are kind of outside of the site selection tool, and we'll get to those in a little while. So um, one of the things Elisa mentioned is um, our, all of our maps are Google map based. So you can see we've got our Google map um, here on the side, as well as some of the properties that are populating our application um, on the side. The entire site is interactive. So always feel free to punch a button or click the mouse. Um, there's many things to do and see. You can expand the map at any time if you want a bigger view. And um, of course, then just go back and reset that. So I can search by city, county, metro, region. Um, there's really no limit. We can add different 
as well towns you will help us define the geography that you want listed here so don't feel limited and you're going to hear me say that probably a couple of times don't feel limited to what you see here these are customizable um, I can also search by sites and buildings at the same time, or if I'm only interested in searching buildings because I'm interested in a specific um, you know, project that maybe I'm hunting for, I can select that option and it will automatically filter. So you don't need to do anything. Um, I can search by, search by square feet or by acreage. So we're gonna say uh, 10,000 square feet. We'll just do 10,000 square feet or more. And then I can also search for sale or for lease. And um, we may have, yeah, there we go. Uh, for sale, for lease, and then various building types. So once again, don't feel limited to the types of buildings that we have here. These are customizable and we also have subcategories. So for office, for example, it could be class A, class B, medical, et cetera. Our more filters button are going to take us to uh, some additional questions, street name, lease rate, sales rate, et cetera. Keywords is important because this allows the user, your website visitor to search by various keywords that they know they want to have associated with the property. And then we have various assets. Um, you know, the neat thing about this is GIS planning has done such a great job of customizing this tool for each individual client. So you have the ability to add various assets that are just part of your community. So you may not want to add um, opportunity zone if you don't have opportunity zone, but if you do have opportunity zones, because these are a really big thing going on right now, um, your user can search by only opportunity zone properties. Again, these are customizable and we have several to choose from. So searching our properties, we've come out with some results that meet our criteria. You can see that they, cor they correspond with the um, map above here on our side. And then of course I can search any one of the properties on the side and view the details. One of the cool features about this is we can also search by a drawn area on the map. So if I can get just as creative as I want with my drawing tool and only search this highlighted area for properties that meet my criteria. So it really allows your user to get very specific on exactly where they want to be geographically. A lot of times, you know, viewing on a website, you're not quite sure where the city boundaries or the county boundaries start or end. And this gives them the ability to control their geography just based on um, more of a visual outlook. Um, I can also, as Elisa mentioned, pinpoint at any time and then get all of the data that we have from this pinpoint. And I'll show you the data here kind of in the back end. So we'll take a look at that in just a little while. One of the other fun new features that we have is the ability to save properties. Now you'll see by clicking this, I'm able to save this property to one of the folders I've already created. You don't need to register to use the site. Um, your URL, you, everyone has a specific um, number kind of assigned to their computer. It will remember your computer until you've cleared these photo folders or deleted these folders. So I can actually save this project to project uh, Widow We Wit with some of the uh, Marvel characters. Some, so we've got, um, I don't even know, Widowmaker, Iron Man, Wonder Woman, etc. So I can save as many um, projects as I want, as many folders as I want, create new folders. And the cool thing about this tool is I can look at these results at any time by my folder. And if I ever want to share this folder, I can share this entire folder of properties via email, link. Um, I can even download them into um, a flyer so I can print that and attach and maybe I'm going to go out in the field and want to bring those flyers with me. So if I have several properties marked for a particular project, I can actually in email that entire folder to that site selector and they'll get the entire folder with all of those properties in it. So it really is kind of a cool new feature. You can do that, of course, internally with your team or you can do that to particular uh, different projects that are looking at your at your region. So let's kind of view one of these project um, uh, flyers and look at some of the information that we have here. Um, Elisa, always feel free to jump in if I'm uh, missing anything. Will so, do. 
doing great. Uh, it's all very clear. Very good. So you'll see at first glance we have some um, fo photos of this particular building. Uh, don't feel limited to just a couple of photos. We also um, can accommodate video and drone imagery. So you have many different options to upload here. Your primary contact can all be customized. We can add your name here uh, so the user can just simply enter their information and um, hit this contact us button, which will go directly into your inbox. At any time, in my experience, I can view the county or the community information and I'll show you in just a bit what that looks like. Below is going to be a description of the property. Um, this can be as detailed um, as you would like and we have the ability to customize some of this so it's auto-filled. So for example, if you're a community and you have one water, water provider or one gas provider and you know by zip code uh, where those boundaries are, we can add that so that information is automatically updated to the property information so it does not need to be re-entered every time. So that's kind of an important um, detail. Anything to make it easier for our clients. We can also add multiple levels of contact information. So if you've got multiple um, different um, contact people that you want to include on that card, we can do that. And then again, at any time during our user experience, you can look at all of the cities counties or metro areas served by this particular client. Uh, this is really great because this will allow me to now only search New Smyrna Beach properties or Ormond Beach properties. So it just gives me the ability to filter down in a very quick format so I can look at some of this data. Uh, some of the other information that we include is our demographics, labor force, and consumer expenditure information. Um, we have, I know we still have our little squiggly map. Our default here is a 10 mile radius. And one of the things we've done on this, on the new platform is we've made this even easier to use than before. I can change my radius that I'm interested in looking at by simply dragging out the map and you can see my 14 miles automatically changes. And if you look at the data, the data will automatically change with it. So you don't need to do anything outside of um, adjust your radius tool. Uh, you can always enter in your miles or your minutes time here manually, but you do have the ability to change that just on the fly. I can also look at heat signature by simply activating our heat maps. Uh, this will allow you to look at our property and figure out where our um, more populated areas are, our more dense areas, and where our more rural sections of this area will be located. And I can always go down to the block group level um, by simply clicking that button. Um, below is going to be a breakdown of our population, our age, gender, ethnicity. We have not only our two th uh, 2018 information, but our projected 2020 information. And at any time, I can look at this information in graph form if I want a more visual layout of the data that I'm looking at. Our demographic information, as well as labor force and consumer expenditure, is brought to you by Applied Geographic Solutions in Thousand Oaks, California, and it's updated two times annually. Now, I, I do want to pause here for just a moment and, and kind of point out, we understand that one of the big buzzwords, sorry about the little warning there, um, one of the big buzzwords is ESRI, ESRI, or ESRI. There's a couple ways to pronounce it. Interesting little fact. Esri used to purchase their information, their data information from Applied Geographic Solutions before they got into the data business. So um, Applied Geographic Solutions is the vendor of choice by Google. So we feel um, in just the many years of the 20 years of GIS planning that um, um, AGS is the vendor of choice. So that's why we use it. It goes all the way down to the zip plus four level, so you're not losing any data or any numbers or compromising your data in any way. Um, our labor force and consumer expenditures, very much like our demographics, is, um, is updated two times a year. And again, this information can be modified in terms of our distance, and we'll have a breakdown of where our residents are spending our money. As like the property report, any of this information can be shared via email, um, or link as well as uh, printed or printed into a PDF. 
The fun thing about this link um, or sharing it on social media is you can simply rename this link and it's really great if you're doing a newsletter or some type of marketing activity and you want to include some data about the growth in your community or some of the new properties coming on board. Um, the, those little links is a great way to do that. Our wage and salary information, go ahead. Can I just jump in on that one? Because, you know, I'm the marketer for GIS planning and because part of what I do is work individually with our clients to help them use these tools as effectively as possible so that they're driving as much traffic, qualified traffic as possible, is that those links are really, really key. And there is no other product on the market that does this. So you can generate exactly the kind of custom map that you want around a specific property, around a community, around a region. And then you can use that on social media. You can put it in responses to RFPs or presentations or really anything. And you can download those beautiful map images as well. So that is really a very, very powerful tool to be using when it comes to bringing more people back to the website to see what you're trying to direct attention to. Excellent, excellent point, thank you. Um, okay, so our wage information is brought to you by the Bureau of Labor St and St Statistics. I'm having a challenge with words today. Um, here I can kind of scroll down. This map isn't interactive. Um, however, it does allow you to do further analysis into specific occupations and the mean hourly and annual wages as well as median hourly and annual wages. Um, I can also look at this in a heat signature that heat signature is avail available to you um, on several of our interactive reports. Our business information is one of my favorite reports because it really kind of hones down into who is in your community in terms of business. Um, I don't know that we mentioned early on, but I am a former client of GIS planning, as is our vice president of sales and our um, client services director. So we have three former clients of GIS planning who love the company and believed in the company so much we actually came to work for them. So um, one of the things that I loved is our business report. It's very detailed. Again, just in the, um, just like before, I can always change my radius. I didn't kind of scroll out just for the sake of time. Um, but it really does break out into where our businesses are and which industries uh, we have within our community. One of the things that's coming because we're always working to expand and um, improve on our tools is the ability to search um, kind of up here at the top. Your user will have the ability to search. For example, I'm interested in any professional scientific and uh, technical service companies, um, maybe the engineers or um, research and development programming software and who make um, you know $50,000 a year in sales and have two or more employees. That's just kind of a, a rough guesstimate. So I'm able to search by points that I enter in without having to scroll down. So it's a very user-friendly system and it will be really easy to use. Um, it's certainly when we add that, even though right now all you have to do is scroll down and click the information that you're looking. The interesting thing about this type of data is the need that it meets for your existing industries. We can't forget the businesses that are already in your community. So for example, I can see that there's a lot of construction type um, businesses. It's all done by NAICS code. Our two, four, and six digit NAICS code is along this, this grand strand right here. But we don't have a whole lot going on over here. So this may be an area I'm interested in looking at expanding if I'm a local business um, in that particular industry. Our business data is updated four times annually. Um, we are the only GIS vendor to offer information in such detail, but also that's updated four times annually. Uh, we really try and capture that change of what's going on in your community um, in terms of businesses that are coming and going. Our talent information is a little bit different. It's one of our newer reports. Uh, this is going to map actually where our talent is coming from, where our graduates are. So here we're showing our top uh, degrees by number of graduates, as well as our top five universities by number of graduates. Our default here is 50 miles. However, this can be modified. I do believe that this goes out to 90 miles. Um, and then below is going to be a breakdown of where our graduates, what um, field of study our graduates are graduating in. 
and then out of which university are they graduating. So I'm able to kind of hone down into some of the business admin and management um, courses and where they're, oops, and that was an uh, operator error, so I apologize for that. Uh, so where my university graduates are coming from out of for business admin and management. I apologize. I got a little too fast on the draw. One downside of <laughs> the live web, the live web webinar. Um, I can always um, look at who my graduates are and again the university they're coming from and that will highlight on the map. And once again this information can be shared or exported in multiple formats. We also have our city and county profile. So I mentioned that earlier we could view the profile for the community that we're, that we're viewing. This button is also here. So if you want to look at city and county profile of a building that you're actually looking at, uh, you can click this information. This information is an aggregate of all of the information that we provide. So it has not only our population information, but age and how that may have changed over the years, educational attainment, labor force, talent, number of employees, etc. So it really is kind of an overall snapshot of my community. And again, we have this information available not only by city and county, but we can do it by metro, by region, and even by town. So if you're a smaller community, don't feel like you're sacrificing on, the, on data or quality of data because you're a smaller community. We have that information. Now, a couple other things I'd like to show you is the ability to customize this for your for these uh, for those of you whose communities are in uh, or have opportunity zones. Some of the things that we've added are um, we can customize this for you. So, for example, this is our um, one of our clients. We call it Cirque Lovingly in-house, but it's for the state of uh, Connecticut. We have activated their Opportunity Zone layer, which is one of the many layers that are provided by GIS planning. Uh, so our layer is on, as well as the list of properties that are located within an Opportunity Zone. You can see that we also have our Opportunity Zone banner. Um, here at the top. So if I'm interested in searching for properties within an opportunity zone, that information is just, it's just right there. We do have clients that have two separate tools. So these are available to you. So if you have the regular um, application here that wants to highlight everything, including opportunity zone properties, you can have that. And then for those communities that have a special opportunity zone program, and the only thing you're looking for is those opportunity zone properties and that's kind of site, we can do something like this for you too. You're not limited to having to have two, you may have one or the other, but I'm just trying to share that that information, uh, that that is also available for you. One of the other uh, cool new features that we offer is for those opportunity zone properties is this is one of our clients in the city of Stockton. So all of the information that we showed you in the site, the sites and buildings tools, the demographics, the business information, that mapping that shows those map layers, all of that information is also available to you in very interactive, easy to use intelligence components. These fit in your website on any page that you like outside of the GIS tool. What that is and the benefit for that is it keeps your data consistent, updated on a regular basis so you do nothing. It can go on to any page that you like and again it's interactive. One of the things that Stockton did that I always love to highlight, especially when it comes to opportunity zones, is they've got their map. Again, this map is interactive. And this is showing where our opportunity zone census tracts are. So we have our census tracts highlighted as well as our boundary map. Um, one of the things we can add for you if you want more information on that is the ability to see what the demographic information is within these zones. Um, you, these intelligence components can be purchased separately or come with the application, um, the full edition application. But we can get more into that on a private demo if you're interested in more information on how that works. But it's a great way to continue to highlight those opportunity zones that are within your community. Uh, Alisa, do you have anything you think that um, I need to probably hit on or that we need to add? 
No, I think uh, you've done a really good job uh, assessing all that. I mean, Opportunity Zones is an example of an additional data layer that we can add in and we tell our clients um, that if they have other kinds of data that we can build that in, depending on the format that it's in, uh, if it's relevant to economic development, that's an option as well. And that's something that we can add under map layers. Very good. And do we have any questions? We do, actually. So um, one of the questions that we need to look at is um, whether this changes anything about um, how things are done on the back end. So we have new search functionality clearly here, but um, what what's the, someone wants to know what has changed in terms of what needs to be done about how to um, add, I guess, add properties is one question, if I'm understanding that correctly, and how we change the way that we save our properties. So you did walk through the saving properties option. We did walk through the saving part, which is really just, you really just click a heart and you select the folder that you want to save that property to. So that's how we save a property. And um, there's no need to log in, no need to create an account. Correct. We make that super correct. Easy. Yes, we're not capturing that type of information. Um, the information in the back to add a property is as easy as it was before if you're a client and i'm sorry i, I can't see off the top of my head if you're a, a client or not um you simply go into the back admin system the system i have to tell you it's funny because i'm not a techie i'm not a tech person i don't have a degree in any of this i'm an economic developer and so but the back end of the system is really a one click type of system so if i want to activate a property i click a button to activate a property or approve a property just one click if i want to deactivate a property which means it's no longer seen by the public i can do that with just one click so it really is a very easy to use property um, we will customize it for you in that we can um, add mandatory information. And in fact, one of the things that we've added, which is I'm so glad actually this question came up, we actually now have the ability to feed properties into the system for you. So you no longer have to work with your broker community or we can work in, um, you know, in conjunction with your broker community, as well as um, our property feeding service that can feed these properties into the site directly for you. So you really have to do nothing. Um, another really cool feature, and I, again, I'm so glad this question came up, is we have the ability, the ability to add MZ data, which is um, a more detailed, uh, like a labor force. Um, data and so we can add an, another tab up in our reports page to add that MZ data if that's something that you're interested in so the back end of the system is a very very easy to use system you can export the information in terms of the users and the properties that you have you still have the ability to build um, our proposals which are I'm going to actually forgive me here while I go to our little proposal generator this is our proposal um, that you're able to build for end users. It'll give it a second to kind of come up. This is all customized for you. You can rebuild it anytime that you want to rebuild it. So you can use the template every single time or you can uh, redo it every time that you send out another proposal. It allows you to capture properties that you want to send to this particular um, interested business. They'll map automatically. You can attach any um, documents and then you have four tabs that you can actually name, rename, add video, drone imaging, um, graphs, charts, you name it, about why they should be doing business in your community. The really great thing about this, if you were to link this, if you, if you were to sync the link this site and send it to them in an email and change maybe by adding additional properties into your tool, you're, it's automatically going to change on their end, so you don't need to send them another link. All of that happens on the back end. We'll teach you how to do it, and it's very easy to use. So a couple of other questions. I got a question from Kara about whether we do this in Canada, and the answer is yes. We have a number of Canadian clients. Um, I'm going to send you some links because I know you emailed me, but uh, Windsor Essex, we just um, launched a, a new tool with them, uh, I think a week ago. Uh, Niagara region, uh, City of Ottawa has our very first ever uh, bilingual version, the City of Montreal, Province of Quebec, Abbotsford, British Columbia, Spruce Grove, we're, we're really um, in a lot of different places in Canada. 
Um, and so we're going to be rolling out this new version that Stevie's just showed you in the next couple weeks among our Canadian clients. And I will answer your emails and see what we can uh, we can show you in terms of media needs because there are some data differences in Canada. Um, we did have another question also about um, it, which I think you just addressed uh, about uh, the data because uh, the idea of using MZ data uh, and AGS, which I think is really important. Um, and Dana wants to know, do we inherit this version or is it an upgrade for existing clients? Uh, Stevie, do you want to answer that one for us? Um, you can actually choose whether you want to upgrade to this new um, platform or stay on your current platform. If you are a client, there is no additional charge to go to the new platform. Simply call your client services director or send um, him an email. That would be Jeff Sunnison and let him know that you want to upgrade to the new platform and he'll get you on your way. So and just, a, um, just a clarification on that, Stevie, this is for yes. full edition clients. So anyone correct. who is a client. Um, would be able to uh, to do that. And so those are people um, uh, who have the full edition of Zoom Prospector, which really most of our clients actually do. I would say most. I think there's some uh, some areas that still have the local smaller edition. But, um, and Elisa, I'm on your screen here. Oh, there yeah, we are. Yeah, I just wanted to okay. um, actually uh, to show the questions field in case anyone had any questions for contact information. Just Very good. Very good. The hour. Uh, very good. Yes. Yeah, so, and if you have, so that is my email right there, sfield at gisplanning.com. Please feel free to email me. We can do a webinar like this that's really more one on one or with your team and walk through, and I can hear you and we can answer questions and I can kind of show you live examples and really walk you through any questions that you may have and how this fits into your current website, all of the tools that come with it. I mean, we didn't even touch on the analytics with the three sets of analytics that you get with this tool that actually tells you the name of the company that's on your website and which properties they're looking at and which reports they're looking at. So, I mean, that is just another whole conversation. I think we've got a webinar coming up about just analytics in the next um, couple of weeks. So feel free to email me if you're interested in more information and learning how you can get these tools on your website or Jeff Sunnison if you are already a client and you want to get the new application or the new platform and um, or have any questions on how to use your current platform. And Alisa, if you have any marketing questions whatsoever and kind of really want to help get create a little bit more traffic to your site, um, she is an excellent resource on really just how to get that word out and create a little bit more buzz about what's going on in your community. Thank you. Um, I recognize that we've gone past the hour. I had one last question from Megan about what the property feeding services is that, or what are the options, whether we use third parties. I know you, you touched on this a little bit, Stevie. We do. We do. We have several. We, we can use any third party that will allow us to connect. Um, some for instance, your broker firms, if they'll allow us to connect, there's typically no charge for that. Or if you have a real estate service locally, we can connect directly to them. We also use Real Massive, Office Space, and Catalyst, so we can connect directly to them. If Real Massive and Office Space do not have properties in your area, don't be concerned. Uh, Real Massive especially can write algorithms and it's this whole thing of how they go to capture these properties so they feed directly into your site. We have several clients that use them already. This, uh, again, for myself was the um, pain point of having a tool like this was getting those properties in there. And so we've now alleviated that for you and we can just build that directly into your contract. So you really have to do nothing. And that is actually the case in Canada as well. We can help arrange rent feeds from brokerages or uh, Real Massive, Spaceless, Altus, different companies here in Canada. Stevie, you uh, were able to cover so much great material in a very short time. I know for some of you, this was a very fast zoom through lots of really uh, interesting content. As Stevie said, we are very happy to go back and do this with you individually um, on an online call so you can ask questions and we can show specifically for your community what this might mean. You will get an email from me in the next 24 hours with a link to this video. You can reach out anytime and we would be happy to answer the questions that you have. Thank you so much for your time today. And Stevie, thank you for a great uh, tour of the new Zoom thank Prospector. You. Thank you so much. I wish you all a happy Valentine's Day and a great upcoming weekend. And um, I'm here if you have any questions. So I, I hope to hear from you. 
Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.